asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. A couple of new articles on the website there today about uh, why the police has lost the whereabouts of up to 500 sex offenders in the UK. That's a serious story. And I've also written about the Brexit transition deal. You might find that interesting. You might find it useful. You might find it a bit of a bore. That's okay as well. Right. Facebook boss Mark Zuckerberg. You probably heard Rebecca Foster talking about this in the Newacht. The Newacht is the Irish word for news. She was talking about Zuckerberg. He's been called on by a parliamentary committee to give evidence about the use of personal data by Cambridge Analytica. You've heard this today. This firm, Cambridge Analytica, is accused of harvesting the data of 50 million Facebook users without their permission and failing to delete that data when told to do so. Damien Collins, the chairman of the Commons Inquiry into Fake News, Insert joke there. Well, Collins accused Facebook of misleading his committee. The Cambridge Analytica firm, which is based in London, denies any wrongdoing. The companies are under scrutiny, Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, following claims by Christopher Wiley. Now, he's a whistleblower. He worked with Cambridge Analytica, and he alleges that it amassed large amounts of data through a personality quiz on Facebook and that 272,000 people took the quiz, more fool them, but the data of some 50 million users, mainly in the US, was harvested without their explicit consent via their friend networks. Do you want to hear Chris Wiley, the man who used to work for Cambridge Analytica? Well, this is brief. It's very brief, but you can hear him here. This is Chris Wiley, the whistleblower. This data uh, was used to create uh, profiling algorithms that would allow us to explore mental vulnerabilities of people um, and then uh, map out ways to uh, inject information into different Im- different streams or channels of, of content online so that people started to see things all over the place that, that may or may not have been true. This is a company that, that really uh, took fake news to, to the next level by powering it with algorithms. Took it to the next level. By pairing it with algorithms, says Chris Wiley, the whistleblower. Yeah. Here's Damien Collins, the MP who's heading up the fake news inquiry. Every minute that passes where they, we don't see some attempt by the senior people in that company to explain what's going on, I think their their reputation is damaged more and more. And ultimately, it's, you know, it's, they might not uh, care too much what Parliament thinks or what Congress thinks, but they should care what their users think. And I think what a lot of people, you know, watching these news bulletins who may have never have heard of Cambridge Analytica will be thinking is, well, can I trust Facebook with my data? And where is Mark Zuckerberg to explain it? Yeah, where is Mark Zuckerberg to explain it? That's what I want to know. That Damien Collins is an insufferable arsehole. When he announced, Collins, that his his panel, his committee, his his group was going to inquire into the impact that fake news is having on our democracy. I wrote to the man several times. Not only did I email him, but I wrote to him the old-fashioned way I explained who I am. I'm not anybody at all. I'm certainly not anybody important, but I explained who I was, my experience, my qualifications, and I pointed out that I've got a pretty large audience In fact, in the independent, totally independent media here in the UK, this is the most listened to radio programme by a country mile, right? Not bragging, but I said that to him at the time. And I said, if you're going to talk about fake news, if you're going to invite people to come and speak to you in public, and if you're going to interview them in front of the cameras about fake news, I deserve to be invited. Because I interview people on a nightly basis that you might claim are purveyors of or spreaders of fake news. Therefore, I would like to be invited to give testimony. Never heard back from him. Having written to him and emailed him several times, never heard a word. Damien Collins. Fake news. Skies K. Burley does a passable job, to be fair to old K, of explaining 
how the data was indeed allegedly acquired. How was the personal information allegedly acquired? Data was initially collected through an app called This Is Your Digital Life. Hundreds of thousands of users were paid to take a personality test. They agreed to have their data collected for academic use by a company called Global Science Research, which worked with Cambridge Analytica. But it's claimed the app then collected the information of their Facebook friends without consent. More than 50 million profiles were harvested in what's being described as one of the tech giant's biggest data breaches ever. The information was allegedly used in 2014 to influence US votes by targeting them with personalised political ads. Here, the Electoral Commission is now investigating what role Cambridge Analytica played in the EU referendum, if any. And separately, the company and Facebook are being investigated by the British Information Commissioner's Office. Yeah, well done, Kay. By the way, it's just been announced in the last couple of minutes that Cambridge Analytica has suspended its boss, a man called Alexander Nix, over this story, basically. So Cambridge Analytica, you're hearing it fresh or hot off the presses, have suspended their boss, Alexander Nix, has suspended its boss, Alexander Nix. That's a breaking news story. You know what I was thinking today? You know what I was thinking today? Even if they attempted to do this, what they're trying to claim, what the news media, and this guy, this whistleblower, Chris Wiley, they're trying to claim the untenable that people saw more pro-Trump stuff on their Facebook timelines. And those people didn't think about it, didn't challenge it, didn't have any critical thinking skills, no faculties whatsoever. They took it all on board and they decided to vote for Trump. And they're also trying to say this happened during the EU in-out referendum as well. This is nonsense. And I think what it is, and I don't think you need me to tell you what it is, It's just another bullet fired, just another weapon being used by those who want to lock down the internet to develop new ways to take ownership of not only what you see, read, watch and hear, but what you can do yourself on the internet. They want to determine what is real and what's fake. They want to take ownership of what is real and what's fake and delete or marginalise what it is they say is fake, namely independent media sources. That's the way it's that's the way it is. Right? And this is just one of those kind of problem reaction solution scenarios. Oh, we've all this fake news and it it threw up anomalous results in various elections. We can't have that, so we need to do something about it. It's a problem reaction solution thing. I have no time for any political party or any politician, nor do I have any time for the process. I spend most of my life trying to wean people off it by demonstrating it's 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 silliness by by demonstrating how the house always wins so i'm not you know a liberal progressive conservative whatever but this is about them they it taking ownership of what you get to read and see and hear and watch but also what you get to post as well and it ain't good can't believe for a minute that they were able to influence so many people. I just don't believe it. Anyway, here's a very big story. A story that I've been reporting on since 2012. And it's taken this long for the former French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, to be taken into police custody for questioning over allegations that he received campaign funding from the Libyan leader, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, who, of course, is dead now. Police are investigating these claims and alleged irregularities over the financing of his campaign back in 2007. He he has previously been uh, been questioned even as part of this probe. He failed to 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 win re-election in 2012. He was questioned today in Nanterre, a suburb in western Paris. Back in 2013, France opened an investigation into allegations that Sarkozy's campaign had benefited from these illicit funds from President uh, Gaddafi. Let's have a listen to this. This is Michelle Clifford. She's a Sky News reporter 
and she's been at that French town of Nanterre today. Have a listen. Well, he's still in custody. He was. Uh, he came here this morning along with a former minister and close aide. They're being interrogated uh, by magistrates in relation to uh, allegations of illicit funding for his 2007 presidential campaign, and specifically that money was funneled from Libya to help with that presidential campaign. There are allegations that as much as 50 million euros was given to uh, Sarkozy uh, during uh, the campaign. Some allegations also that individuals delivered euros in cash in suitcases, bulging suitcases, um, to help uh, him secure victory as he did in 2007. And everybody will remember those uh, images, uh, Kay, of uh, Colonel Gaddafi coming to the Elysee uh, Palace in 2007 in the early months after uh, Sarkozy uh, was inaugurated. A lot of people found their intimate relationship uh, very curious. Now, I have to say that uh, Nicolas Sarkozy has always denied the allegation of uh, receiving money from Libya. He um, has said previously that the allegations are retaliation from Libya for France's intervention in 2011 in the country, which um, helped with the toppling of uh, Colonel uh, Gaddafi. So he's always insisted he isn't guilty of the charges. Now, we understand that he can be held here for 48 hours before being released or appearing in front of a judge where he could face charges. We're told possible money laundering, possible fraud charges. So uh, incredibly uh, serious. But uh, whatever happens here, Majesty Magistrates have already uh, recommended that he stand trial in relation to uh, financial irregularities uh, involving his 2012 presidential campaign. That was an unsuccessful campaign. And there is no doubt that the allegations of corruption and illicit funding um, put pay to his uh, attempts to become president in 2016. He started his campaign there. He didn't go uh, very far at all. I think that the corruption and uh, finance charges uh, really weighed uh, against him. So he's still in here. We haven't seen any sign of him. We don't know whether he's going to be uh, released today. As I say, he can be held here for 48 um, hours before being released or facing charges. Right. Now, all of this was known about Sarkozy at the time NATO began bombing in Libya. Bombing in Libya on a pack of lies. Namely, that civilians had to be protected from the regime. Jesus. Good, moderate rebels had to be supported. Jesus, Mary and Holy St. Joseph. You've heard it before, right? Now, Sarkozy fought harder than most at the United Nations to get a coalition to impose a no-fly zone in Libya back in February 2011. So that's seven years ago now. And Sarkozy had a lot to gain from the death of Muammar Gaddafi, or the removal and the imprisonment of Gaddafi. Of course, it turned out Gaddafi was murdered. And back in 2012, Gaddafi's son Saif al-Islam Gaddafi started screaming from the rooftops for the money that his father gave to Sarkozy back a few years before that. I was covering this based in Spain at the time. Nicolas Sarkozy is a murderous little thug, a Rothschild Zionist, if ever there was one. And you wonder when you hear these stories, again, I was talking about this back in 2012 on a radio show in Spain. What's it going to take for people to revolt against this cabal? You have a situation where Sarkozy, in debt to the tune of 50 million euro to Muammar Gaddafi, was leading the calls for the imposition of a no-fly zone over Libya and for the bombing of Gaddafi's army and for the murder, the brutal murder of thousands and thousands of people. Sarkozy should be in chains. He should be at The Hague and he should be on trial for war crimes. He should be found guilty because all the evidence is there and he should never see daylight again until he dies. What's it going to take for people to get up off their arses and to stop this? 